In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the equation of a line in uh, three-dimensional space. And the first page here, well, it's page two, I suppose, but it's the first real page of the note. This is the line that we're, we're talking about. We're going to find the equation of this line. The line contains the point negative 3, 2, 1, so that's a point that's on the line. And the line is parallel to the vector 2, 7, negative 1. So what 2, 7, negative 1 does is provides a specific direction for the line. Kind of similar in uh, two-dimensional space when you talk about slope. Slope there um, specifies a direction for a line, although there's no uh, corresponding um, correspondence to slope really in uh, three-dimensional space, so we use vectors to represent directions. Now I'm going to draw on the diagram here uh, a vector that goes from the origin, 0, 0, 0, to this point, negative 3, 2, 1. And so I could call it the vector OA. I'll also call it little vector A. Another thing I'm going to construct here is a vector that's parallel to the line. So it's also parallel to the direction vector. I'm going to call it Tm, which means it's some multiple of vector m. It could be twice m. It looks like in the diagram it's about twice m, but it's not a specific multiple. One more construction, I'm going to draw the vector from O out to this arbitrary point P here. P is the coordinate, has coordinates x, y, z. And so OP would be the vector x, y, z. Now, according to the triangle law, the vector OP is equal to OA plus AP. And so that's that statement there. Now, vector OP is the vector, we're going to call it the vector P. OA is little a, and uh, vector AP is the vector TM. And this is actually the vector equation of this line in three-dimensional space. Now, <clears throat> so our vector equation would look like this. Vector P, since vector P goes from 0, 0, 0, the origin, to the point x, y, z, it's the vector x, y, z. Uh, the square brackets represent the vector. The uh, round brackets represent just a co the coordinates of a point on the line, or any point. Uh, little a is the vector that goes from the origin to the point, negative 3, 2, 1. So it's a vector, negative 3, 2, 1. And uh, Tm... Uh, T again is a scalar, it's some multiple of vector m, and m is the vector, vector 2, 7, negative 1. So this is the vector equation of this line, or a possible vector equation. There's an infinite number of vector equations because I could use different points in the line, or different multiples of the direction vector. Now one thing we can do with this uh, vector equation is we could use it to generate other points in the line. So for example, if I substitute a number in place of t, it will generate for me when I evaluate this expression a point in the line. If you actually use 0 for t, then this would all be 0 and you'd end up with negative 3, 2, 1, which is the point we already know is on the line. On the next page, we're going to take a look at finding the parametric equations and what are also called the symmetric equations for this line. To get the parametric equation, you solve for x, y, and z. So x, the x component here, would equal the x component negative 3 plus t times the 2x component of the direction vector. So negative 3 plus 2t. y would equal 2 plus 7t. And z would equal 1 minus 1t, or just 1 minus t. So those are the parametric equations. Notice the constants at the beginning are the coordinates of a point on the line, or the the components of a position vector of a point in the line. And the coefficients of t, 2, 7, negative 1, are the uh, direction numbers or the components of the direction vector. Now, in order to get the symmetric equations, we're going to solve each of these for t. And this, we're gonna, I'm going to show the first one here. So I have the first parametric equation is x equals negative 3 plus 2t. So I'm going to solve for t here. So I want to bring that negative 3 over or add 3 to both sides. So I would get x plus 3 equals 2t. And then I, would, I want to isolate t, so I would divide out the 2. So t equals x plus 3 over 2. And so that's the first parametric equation solved for t. That's where I get x plus 3 over 2. Second one. In order to solve for t, we'd bring the 2 over, so it's y minus 2, and then divide out the 7. So t is y minus 2 over 7. And the uh, next one, in order to solve for t, we bring the 1 over, so it'd be z minus 1. And then we'll divide out the negative 1. Now, this is one of the few times in mathematics where it's OK. In fact, it's preferred to leave that negative in the denominator. While it is mathematically correct 
a lot of time, most of the time when you see a negative in the denominator, you would want to not leave a negative there. If we were to multiply both sides, top and bottom, sorry, by negative 1, then this would be negative z plus 1 over positive 1. And mathematically, that is correct. But the reason we don't do that is because we want to leave the negative in the denominator because those 2, 7, and negative 1 are the direction numbers for our direction vector, the components of the direction vector. So if we did that, it would make this next form of the equation less useful. So we would not want to do this. Now the symmetric equations look like this. Since all of these expressions are equivalent to t, equal to t, then we equate them. So x plus 3 over 2 would equal y minus 2 over 7 would equal z minus 1 over negative 1. The denominators, the 2, 7, negative 1, are the uh, components of the direction vector. And now it goes x minus y minus z minus for the coordinates of a point in the line, negative 3, 2, 1. So it's, think of this as x take away negative 3, so the x coordinate of that point is negative 3. y minus 2, so 2, and then z minus 1, so 1. So negative 3, 2, 1 is a point on the line. And again, if you were to rearrange this and write it as negative z plus 1 over 1, then you don't as quickly see that, oh, the direction vector is 1 here, it's not negative 1. Or whatever it would, you, it would, it's negative one, not one. I said that backwards. So you want to leave any negatives in the denominator. On the next page is a summary. Yeah, so if we have a uh, line that contains the point a1, a2, a3, and has direction vector m1, m2, m3, then a vector equation for that line is x, y, z equals a1, a2, a3 plus t times m1, m2, m3. The parametric equations look like this, and again, the constants here are the coordinates of a point in the line. The uh, coefficients of t are the direction numbers for, or the components for a direction vector for the line. Symmetric equations look like this. x minus a1 over m1 equals y minus a2 over m2 equals z minus a3 over m3. And again, a1, a2, a3 is the coordinates of a point in the line, and the, the numbers in the denominator are the components of a direction vector. Now, this uh, statement over here is because you can't have denominators equal to zero. Okay, so none of the direction numbers could be zero. Now, that leads to an interesting example in the, the next page. A lot of times you'll have direction vectors that one of the numbers, or maybe even two of them, would be zero. You couldn't have all three because that would be the zero vector and that has no direction, so it's no point in using the zero vector for a direction vector. And so what happens is you can't write it in true symmetric form if one of these numbers, or, both, or two of them, were, um, were equal to zero. And we'll get to that in the example on the next page. So in example one, we're given the following parametric equations. They're asked to find uh, a vector equation and also symmetric equations. Now, this is a little bit of semantics. Notice I'm trying not to say the vector equation or the symmetric equations because if I use the word the, it implies there's only one of them. There's actually an infinite number because you could use different points on the line or uh, multiples of different direction numbers. So now, the um, so we're going to do the uh, symmetric first. So we're going to solve each of these for t. So for the first one, uh, x equals 5 plus 3t. I want to solve for t, so I bring the 5 over. So it would be x minus 5, and I divide out the 3. So t would be x minus 5 over 3. I can't solve the second one for t because there's no t. There, the direction number is 0, as I was referring to a moment ago. So it's like there's plus a 0t after the 4. The uh, z one I can solve for t. Bring the 6 over, so it would be z plus 6, and then divide out the negative 2. So the symmetric, the, uh, the there I said the, the, the symmetric equations we have here would look like this. It would be x minus 5 over 3 equals z plus 6 over negative 2. And since we could not solve the middle one for t, we write then comma, and then the parametric equation for y y equals 4. So this is not true symmetric form, it's just it's as close as you can get. So we would know from this that the direction number for uh, uh, for y is 0. 
So a point on this line would be the point five four negative six. That's one point. There's there's an infinite number of them. If you want to substitute a different number uh, a number in place of t, see so if we put zero in place of t, we get five four negative six. If I put a different number in place of t, I get I get a different point, and that's okay. You can use that. So the most convenient one is five four negative six though. Now a direction factor for this line would be three zero negative two three zero because it's zero t and then negative two for the z component. So since that's a point and that's a direction vector, then this is one vector equation we could write. We could write x, y, z equals 5, 4, negative 6 plus t times 3, 0, negative 2. And again, the, this is a point on the line. This represents the position vector of a specific point in the line. So it's a vector that goes from the origin to the point 5, 4, negative 6. That's why we actually write this as a vector. That's just the head of the vector, the point that's at the head of the vector. So that's our, our uh, vector equation. In example two on page six here, we're given a, a vector equation, and we're asked to write a vector equation of a line parallel and distinct. Now, distinct means different. We don't want to end up with the same line, okay? A different line, but still parallel to this one. Now, the direction vector of this line is five seven negative two. So, if we want a line parallel to this, we should use five seven negative two or a multiple of it. If you want to use uh, uh, if you want to multiply them all by 2, for example, and use uh, 10, 14, negative 4, that's okay. Or the opposite of this, negative 5, negative 7, positive 2, that's okay. It would still be parallel to this, and that would, that would work. Now, we want to choose a point that's not on the original line. If you arbitrarily choose a point, there is a small chance you might end up with a point in this line. And then we would actually have the same line. We wouldn't have a line distinct from the original line. So... I'm going to choose an arbitrary point, and then we'll check and see if it's actually on this line or not. So 1322, 8 doesn't have any, there's no particular reason I use 1322 and 8 other than the numbers work a little bit nicely here to demonstrate it's not in the line. So I'm going to write out the parametric equations for this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out is there a value for t that if I put in here would generate the point 1322, 8. Because if that, if that number exists, if there's one number I put in place at t to generate 13 for x, 22 for 8, and 22 for y, sorry, and 8 for z, then that point actually would be in the line. If there's different t values to get 13 and 22 and 8, then it's, it's not on the line. So x would be negative 2 plus 5t, and so we'll put 13 in place of x and solve for t. So we add 2 to both sides, we get 15 equals 5t, divide out the 5, and we get t is 3. So if we use 3 for t, we would generate an x-coordinate of 13. So the uh, y parametric equation would be y equals 1 plus 7t. And so we put the 22 in place of y, and we find out what t would be. And so we subtract, subtract 1 from both sides and get 21 equals 7t. And then we divide it with 7. And we actually get 3 again. So, so far it looks like the, um, the point 13, 22, 8 might actually be on this line all the t's have to be the same. So z would be 8 minus 2t. We substitute 8 in place of z. And we, uh, we want to solve for t. So I would uh, add 8 to both sides and get 16 equals negative 2t. And then divide it to negative 2 and we get t is negative 8. And so that ended up being a different value for t. So there's not one value for t that generates the whole point. It's okay that if we put 3 in place of t, we get the first and second numbers x and y, but uh, because if I put 3 in place of t here, uh, we would go 8 minus, uh, this would be 6, is 2, and so the uh, z coordinate, if, if I chosen the point 13, 22, 2, then that would actually be a point that's on this line. We want a point that's not in the line. So 13, 22, 8 is not on that line. So our, uh, the possible vector equation would be x, y, z equals 13, 22, 8, plus t times 5, 7, negative 2. This guarantees that it's parallel to that line, and this guarantees that it's distinct from that line because this is a point that's not on the original line. Now, another possibility, if, uh, if you want to use a, a different multiple of the direction vector, like 10, 14, negative 4, for example, then that's another vector equation. Notice I'm using a different parameter. If I use t for this one, I shouldn't use t for this one. Last example in uh, number three here is asked, which of the following pairs of lines are parallel? So we're given one in symmetric, one in parametric, and one in vector form. And to determine if lines are parallel or not, you 
take a look at the the uh, direction vectors. So for line number one, the direction vector would be two seven negative one or a multiple of that. For line number two, it would be two negative six negative twelve. And for line number three, it would be negative one three six. Now notice that these are multiples of one another. If I take this number three m3 and multiply it by negative 2 I get m2 so negative uh, 2 times negative 1 is 2 negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 and negative 2 times this 6 is negative 12 so m2 is actually negative 2 times m3 these are multiples so those two lines the second and third one would be parallel lines and that's the end of the lesson